I'm called Musings Branchen and I'm a data journalist. Fake news affect our lives every day. We have been with a pandemic for more than a year. And when you find you meet a person who really doesn't believe that this pandemic exists because that person con consumes fake news, that's a danger to ourselves and our society in combating fake news. When you still meet a person who believes that it's not good to take a job, when we should be taking jobs, that's a, that's a danger to that's a danger to our community. That's a danger to ourselves. So, in one way or another, you'll find fake news every day. A few days ago, I was doing a story about how Fred Rumbuye emerged to be the Fred Rumbuye that he is. So I went and scraped YouTube, his YouTube channel, and got all the statistics about the videos that he has been posting from late 2019 up to where we are. And by looking at the statistics, looking, listening to what he says, which is utter and outrageous fake news, and you find that 30,000 people are viewing that video. And you find hundreds of comments saying, thank you, you are giving us the most accurate information. When it's brantant fake news that doesn't need any kind of analysis of fact-checking to understand that it's fake news. That's very dangerous and it's very bad to our, to our community, it's very bad to our society. It's good to criticize our government and there are thousands and thousands of facts that you can wake up in every day, put together and critique this government and people appreciate you without venturing in fake news. You see, when you watch a fake clip of 10 minutes that talks about the pandemic, that talks about getting the job, and after that you are going to listen to a news bulletin where government or the Minister of Health is saying, you got to take the job, you got to protect yourself to have a mask, you got to test yourself. So at the back of your mind, you already have that fake news. So you weigh objective news against fake news. And that's how some people end up discarding what is facts, what's objective news, what's the truth, and embrace fake news. Because that person has a lot of false information at the back of his mind, and he's, he or she is trying to weigh it against the objective truth. In many times, people end up siding with the force of fake information instead of of embracing the objective truth. First and foremost, I believe that the circles that we tend to associate with have a big impact on our opinions, on what we believe in, on what we take as the truth. If you associate with a community that likes trend, trading in false information that will have an impact on what you take as false or objective news. But also importantly, it's taking a personal initiative. If someone sends you a WhatsApp of information about the job, about the pandemic, about having the mask, something that you doubt that it's really not this very objective information. It's very important that you first cross-check before passing that information to your friend, the WhatsApp group where you have hundreds of friends who read it. So first and foremost, we have to take personal initiatives if we are to counter fake news. I think we all need to be responsible with what we share. We must and we need to distinguish humor from fake news, it's very, very dangerous. As you mix humor with fake news, people will be thinking that they are transmitting humor from one group to another. You really, there is this point that you want to 
past your friend so that he can laugh about it but when it is fake news you shouldn't be passing it because you are not passing humor to your friend but you are you are passing fake content